And welcome back to Politics Unplugged. Now, uh, to more of my interview with State Senator Jake Hoffman, we'll get his thoughts on the 2022 election. But first, is, is he the right guy to head the committee vetting the governor's department head nominations? You've also been put in charge of a very significant position. You're in, in, in charge of the nominations committee. You are looking at vetting the governor's picks and nominees to lead very key agencies. Um, that uh, committee has already, you know, recommended that the Senate vote against or reject uh, her pick for the Department of Health. Um, another uh, nominee of hers was withdrawn after, uh, you know, allegations of mismanagement uh, for d child department service, uh, ch child Withdraw safety. Withdrawn by withdrawn, her. Withdrawn by her. Yes. Um, had, had, had emerged. But given the fact that you are this leading voice against Katie Hobbs, how does that make you qualified to be in this position vetting her, her picks? Doesn't that appear to be kind of a conflict there when you've already vowed to block her agenda? Well, Dennis, I would argue that uh, uh, the Constitution actually puts me in the exact position necessary to lead a committee like this. It is the legislative uh, duty to be the check and balance on the executive branch. Uh, the Constitution gives the Arizona Senate uh, the ability and the duty to confirm nominees, people that she appoints mm -hmm. to lead important agencies responsible thing, for things like health and public safety and education. Uh, and so we are doing the job that not only the Constitution uh, empowers us to do, but that the people elected us to do. We want an accurate, honest, and thorough vetting mm -hmm. of every single nominee that comes through that committee. And keep in mind, 50% of the nominees that we've heard so mm -hmm. far through the confirmation hearing process have been voted to confirm. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the you know, Department of Economic Security, a very important uh, division, the Department of Transportation, another very important agency, both have been moved forward because she sent us reasonable candidates that were qualified and experienced, and most importantly, were willing to have a direct, open, and mm. honest conversation but, uh, with the committee. But doesn't that kind of create a bias when people look at comments like that and that, yes, you do need to provide a check. That's very important. I think everybody wants these people to be vetted very well, face tough questions. But some people may look at this and say, like, look, at what point does uh, Senator Hoffman stop being a check and becomes an impediment to the functioning of the government here in Arizona? Well, I think Senator uh, Warren Peterson, who is our Arizona Senate president, um, really did a good job in establishing this committee because he set it up with a diverse array of opinions and, and uh, you know, elements of the political spectrum, right? We have folks like uh, Senator T.J. Shope, uh, who has always been a more moderate voice within the Republican Party. We have uh, stable uh, senators like Senator Kerr. We have Senator Alston from the Democrats on there and Senator Birch. So we have a very diverse viewpoint on there. And I think you've seen that play out in our committee, in our confirmation hearings. You get a wide range of questions, both from Democrats and Republicans, that represent all elements of the Arizona people. And that's a good thing, because it creates the most robust process for ensuring an accurate, honest, and thorough vetting of these nominees. And do you think that Governor Hobbs does have any kind of mandate to make these picks and get these picks through? I believe that Governor Hobbs won by a very slim majority, and she needs to understand that it is her duty to work with the legislature, not only on things like uh, the confirmation hearing mm -hmm. process, but on things like the budget. Republicans passed a responsible budget, which she promptly vetoed with no clear explanation as to why she did that. Um, you know, she has You're vetoed about the, the, rent, budget, the rental correct. tax repeal. She's vetoed the food tax repeal, right? Or maybe that maybe she hasn't well, the, vetoed the, that the, one Well, yet, the rental but. tax, I know, you know, that there's some questions there about whether renters would actually see the savings that were promised them. I think she spelled that out kind of in her veto message there as well. And I think the food tax bill, uh, you know, I can't, I don't know, think she's vetoed that. I don't know if it's gotten to her, to her desk yet, but there is a lot of concern that that actually may hit certain communities uh, with their city budgets, which could then end up hurting public safety budgets out there, and it could, could lead to some cuts out there. Dennis, the reality is what we've seen from the governor's office is nothing more than virtue signaling when it comes to bipartisanship. When it comes to actually being bipartisan, working with the legislature, and doing the job that the people have elected her to do, uh, she has not done that, her staff have not done that. Whereas Republicans in the legislature have had an open door policy and repeatedly invited her to participate in the process, and she simply hasn't chosen to do so. Well, uh, we've got to kind of wrap up here. We're getting a little bit long on time. I want to do talk a little bit about some of the election stuff. And there's been a lot of election bills uh, for changes, for reforms, however you want to frame that. Uh, I want to ask you just personally, you look back on 2022, uh, a lot of accusations that haven't been substantiated 
of fraud, of misdoing with that election. Where do you stand? Do you think the 2022 election was fair and honest? Well, Dennis, here's what I can tell you about the 2022 election. Attorney General, uh, Attorney General Brnovich, when he was in office, he laid it out very clearly in a November letter that there were multiple violations of election law by Maricopa County election officials. And here's the thing, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, whether you're an independent or a Green Party candidate or a Libertarian, I really don't care where you fall on the political mm -hmm. spectrum. If Maricopa County election officials or any election officials are violating election law, and it has a disenfranchising effect on voters of any party. That in and of itself is a big concern. And I believe that that's why the legislature yeah. is doing its job to look at that and yeah. see what tweaks need to be made. But it has not been substantiated. Uh, widespread voter fraud by the courts, by various uh, uh, reviews, not been substantiated. I mean, why, do you, why does there the need to continue to make these reforms to elections that don't seem, to, you know, to uh, uh, you know, there doesn't seem to be a widespread fraud, or there isn't been the widespread fraud that has been accused by some people, uh, particularly Republicans. Well, Dennis, I don't actually believe that it, it has to necessarily be about widespread fraud. Fraud. When mm -hmm. you have county election officials that violate election law, that in and of itself is a concern mm -hmm. that that should concern every voter, regardless of party. Mm -hmm. Now, what we have to remember is that the Constitution specifically gives the legislature in every state capital the authority to oversee and administer election policy. Mm -hmm. And so this is not a, a, a one and done job. We will never be done, uh, and that should be Republicans and Democrats, mm -hmm. will never be done evaluating, reevaluating, and optimizing our election process so that it's fair, so that it's honest, and so that it's accessible. So, and, and I, I do have to mention, you brought up Attorney General Brnovich. There's been some recent reports about him uh, actually sitting on evidence that debunked a lot of claims of voter fraud, and he's been getting criticized for those reports and those accusations. But I do want to ask you finally before we get going here, uh, there is a very controversial joint elections hearing where Governor Hobbs and others uh, on both sides of the political aisle were being accused of really crazy accusations of working with drug cartels. Want to get your statement on that. Do you denounce those kinds of accusations, unsubstantiated accusations that were made in that Senate committee? I think Liz Harris, Representative Liz Harris and Representative Wendy Rogers, right, two of the, lead, the leaders on that committee, have both put out statements saying that there was no evidence to substantiate sure. the claims. Uh, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them, as the experts who heard the testimony, be the ones to speak yeah, to. But I just, were, were you, you are a, leading, a leader of the Freedom Caucus. I'm assuming they're in that Freedom Caucus. You know, do you think that was irresponsible for, to allow that to happen? Well, I believe that the legislature needs to evaluate information, but we should be evaluating information that's substantive and based in fact. And as Representative Harris and Representative Rogers both said, they don't believe that that was based in fact. So I think that, that answers that. All right. Thank you very much, Senator Jake Hoffman. Thanks a lot for stopping by here. We'll see you thanks next time. Stop by.